Welcome to my favorite movies of 2020. I wanted to wait until we were a little closer to the Oscars to release these list videos, so here we are. This list is only going to cover my top 5 favorites of the year, mainly due to the fact I saw 20 less movies than last year because of everything. I actually haven't talked about most of these yet, so let's get started with a new edition. There are three kinds of people. The ones above, the ones below, and the ones who fall. The Platform is a Spanish-produced sci-fi thriller directed by Calte Gastelo Urrutia and written by David De Sola and Pedro Rivero. We follow a man who is staying in this tower that has nearly endless floors and one platform of food that lowers until it reaches the bottom. Everyone gets to pick what they want as it descends, choosing to leave whatever is left for the people towards them at the bottom, in the hands of the people above them. I think this movie works better the less you know about it going in. Reveals and explanations on how the system works and motivations are more impactful that way. The commentary may be up front, but it's using the extreme as a juxtaposition to our world, arguably in a maybe not such a far-reaching metaphor we'd like to believe. The movie is constantly moving and keeping you antsy on what's to come next, what will change, who we'll see next, and is humanity able to save itself after coming this far? Well, thank God the mummy didn't work out, because we may have not gotten this version of The Invisible Man, a sci-fi horror adaptation of the H.G. Wells classic, directed and written by Lee Whannell. We follow a woman who escapes her abusive ex, and although it appears he died soon after, something otherworldly feels as though it's still watching and stalking her. I talked about the movie earlier this year, and I still think it's one of the best directed films of 2020. Whannell made empty doorways scary. That's respectable in its own right. Great camera work actual eyebrow raising effects and terrifying sequences, you'd be missing out if you don't see this one. Surprise. You know why you're on trial here? Trial of the Chicago 7 is a courtroom drama that retells the famous 1968 trial of eight protesters that fight the system after a riot breaks out at the Democratic National Convention written directed by Aaron Sorkin. I talked about before how everyone loves a good courtroom drama, and this is another one you have to add to the list. You have outstanding performances by the entire cast filled with stellar actors. A lot of shocking ups and downs play out that may seem to be created for the movie, but actually happened. Dressing up as police officers, constantly mocking the judge, and yes, a man was cuffed and gagged to a chair in front of a full courthouse. Like any historical adaptation, some events may be switched around or lined up to make more narrative sense, but overall you still get what this trial meant to so many people and the seedy nature that laid below. The chemistry and banter you get from the convicted protesters feels so genuine, and arguments that they themselves have within each other mirror a lot of today's issues, with people not only on opposing sides, but people who seem to be fighting for the same causes as well. How much is it worth to you? What's your price? To call off the revolution? My life. Open your eyes, cause a new day is dawning. A one, a two, a you know what to do. Possibly known as Chadwick Boseman's last film, it does the incredible actor justice, maybe even his best character work. Based on the legendary blues singer Ma Rainey and a recording session that goes wrong and dysfunctional at every turn. Written by Ruben Santiago Hudson and directed by George C. Wolfe. Like The Trial of the Chicago 7, what makes this movie stand out is the performances from each and every actor in this film. The dialogue is rich with individuality, back and forth being as snappy and deliberate as it seems fit, and heartbreaking revelations and turns constantly. Viola Davis and Chadwick Boseman may seem like the stars, which they pull no punches and are authentic as you could ever experience, but everyone else is pulling their own weight and even more to make this an emotional roller coaster that's just over 90 minutes. Good God Almighty. 
A black comedy thriller about a woman who goes out on the town and pretends to be extremely drunk to test who will try and take advantage of her situation, teaching them a lesson by the end of the night. Directed and written by Emerald Fennell in her feature directorial debut. This is a movie that is as funny as it is unsettling. There are sequences that you know the reality of her situation, yet just by the actions taking place on screen, there is no position you can sit to help you fight the urge to squirm. This isn't a movie that is anti-man or feminazi propaganda either. It reflects on not only what role the people who actively play in this troubling norm, but also those who are complacent or just accept these actions happen with a shrug. The main character isn't this perfect person either. The trailer may seem like the whole point is that she's this unstoppable, righteous bringing warrior against gross, sad bar patrons. But it also shows how her past and the fact that she refuses to move on or find a healthy form of closure is leading her down this path of loneliness and self-destruction. Everyone in the movie is capable of faults because in real life, that's how it is. On top of the message and the story, the set and art design is fantastic eye-catching uses of pink and blue, emotional highs and lows of every sort, and an ending that may split some watchers, but it worked for me, so I give it a big recommendation. I might want to get back into it. And that does it for my favorites of 2020 list. There are still plenty out there that could have been on here, but these five either are my strongest recommendations or gave me a little something that stuck more than other great films. Next week, we're tackling the five worst movies I saw last year. So please, enjoy my pain, and I'll see you next time.